the same lack of foresight on the part of certain most high, most saintly cosmic individuals, and the second was, once again, those abnormal conditions of ordinary being and distance established by your favorites themselves.
top of my famous observatory with everything in it, and in gratitude for this he promised to report to me once a year. According to the time calculation of the planet Mars, all the important events occurring on the planets of that system and so he keeps me accurately informed of the most important events on all the planets on which there is a being existence, and, knowing my great interest in the three grain beings breeding on the planet Earth, he does his. Clearly evident to send me information concerning all their manifestations, thus keeping me constantly in touch with the whole process of ordinary existence of these three brain beings. Although I am now inaccessibly remote, even for their featherly thoughts. Governor of our beings gathers all his information about the three brain beings of the planet Earth either from his own observations through the great Castellano I left him, or from reports communicated to him by those three beings of our side who chose to remain forever on the planet Earth, all three of whom at the present time on the continent of Europe have substantial enterprises of their own, indispensable for everyone existing there under the prevailing conditions. One of them has an undertaker's business in one of the large cities, the second, in another large city, runs a bureau for marriage and divorce, and the third is the proprietor of a network of agencies founded in various cities for what is called currency exchange. Single quote. However, my boy, owing to this aphorogram, I have wandered a long way from my original tale. Let us go back to our former theme. Well then, on this short flight of mine to the planet Earth, our ship occasion alighted on the sea causeway, Red Sea, and we alighted on this sea because it washed the eastern shores of the continent of Graben Sea, now called Africa, where I wished to go, and where the eight beings I needed then bred in greater numbers than on any of the other land masses on the surface of your planet. And also because this sea is particularly convenient for mooring our ship occasion, but above all because it borders a country known as Nilia, now called Egypt, where at that period those beings of our tribe existed who wished to remain on that planet, and upon whose help I was relying to collect the eight. Alighted on the Red Sea, we left our ship occasion and reached the shore by Pithadrenikos, and afterward, on camels, we came to the city where our beings existed, then the capital of the future Egypt. This capital city is called Thebes. On the very day of my arrival in the city of Thebes, one of the beings of our tribe there told me, among other things, that the earth beings of that locality had devised a new system for observing other cosmic concentrations from their planet, and in order to put it into effect were then building the required structures, and, as everybody was saying, this new system offered advantages and possibilities that are too unparalleled on the earth. When he had told me all he had seen with his own eyes, I at once became greatly interested, for from his account of certain details of this new construction it seemed to me that these terrestrial beings had perhaps found a way of overcoming a difficulty to which I myself had just been giving a great deal of thought while completing the building of my observatory on the planet Mars. And so I decided to postpone for a while my original intention of immediately going farther south on that continent to collect the apes I needed, 
and to go instead to the place where those structures were being erected, in order to find out all about it for myself. Well then, the day after my arrival in the city of Thebes, I took as guide one of the beings of our tribe who had many friends there. Among them the chief builder of those structures, and accompanied of course by our faithful Ahun, I traveled this time on what is called as Shortakas, down this great river now known as the Nile. Near the place where this river flowed into a large salutary Ahmian area, those great artifacts were just being completed, certain parts of which especially interested me. The district where the work was being carried on, both for this new observatory, as they called it, and for other buildings designed for the welfare of their being existence, was then named Avalkland. A few years later it came to be called Caronana, and today it is referred to simply as the outskirts of Cairo. These great artifacts were begun long before my fourth flight to the earth by one of their pharaohs, a title given to their kings by the beings of that region, and at the time of my first visit to this place they were being completed by his grandson, also a pharaoh. Although the observatory that interested me was not quite finished, observations of the visibility of cosmic concentrations could be made from it, and the results issuing from these concentrations as well as the reciprocal action of these results could be studied. At that period on the Earth the beings occupied with such observations and studies were called astrologers. But later, when that psychic disease of your favorite called wise acring, was finally fixed in them, and these specialists, shriveled and shrank, becoming specialists, only in giving names to remote cosmic concentrations, they came to be called astronomers. The difference in value and significance for the beings around them between the professionals of that time and those who supposedly follow the same occupation today may show you the extent of the decline that has steadily taken place in the crystallization of data and gendering, same logical mentation, which your favorites as three brain beings ought to have in their common presence, I therefore find. It necessary to explain this change for the worse, and help you reach an approximate understanding of it. At that period, the terrestrial three brain beings of responsible age called astrologers, besides making observations and investigations of various other cosmic concentrations for the purpose of a more detailed study of the branch of general learning they represented, took upon themselves several other definite essence obligations for their fellow beings. obligations was to advise, as are, their listeners, you, all the conjugal cares in their 